What's up, everybody? And today we're reacting to the US military is everywhere. Now, I know there's a lot of US military bases all over the world. I've actually visited one in Bahrain. It was really, really nice. Um, but I don't know the extent of our footprint. So now that I'm a US citizen, I'm kind of interested to see where our military bases are, if I'm honest with you. It's something that I'm very interested in. This is by Johnny Harris. I will leave a link down below to the original video. Go over there, like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff for him. I'm sure he will deserve it. Um, also, big news, link down below to Original Adventures, both the YouTube channel and the Instagram. Me and my wife are converting a school bus and traveling the US. We're really excited. This is literally going to change our lives. And we've started vlogging it. There's uh, three episodes up already. Go and check them out. It's totally fun. Original Adventures, link down below. But for now, let's shut up. Let's pop this up. And let's watch this, shall we? Imagine a world where the most powerful country on earth in 2021 wasn't the United States, but rather Spain. Hmm. And instead of setting up military bases just in their own country, they also set up bases all around the world. Yeah, that'd be scary. Lots of those bases are in former colonies, but also there's a bunch in the United States. Just imagine this. You zoom into Fayetteville, North Carolina, and you see a huge military base. But it's not a U.S. military base, it's a Spanish base on American soil. With lots of homes for the Spanish soldiers and their families, powerful weapon systems, aircraft, all run by the Spanish military. Go inside of one of these bases and it's all Spanish restaurants. Americans can't come in here unless they work for the Spanish government. And then imagine a hundred more of these, all throughout the United States on American soil, and hundreds of more throughout the world. That's kind of scary if you think about it, right? That you're allowed to put a military base of a different country smack bang in your country. Like, that's kind of scary. Or shift the scenario a little bit. What if it was a country that wasn't our ally? A country like China. What if they had military bases, not in the US, but right up close to our border? Yeah. Powerful weapon systems right off our shores in islands in the Caribbean. If you're an American, you have to imagine what that would feel like. Yep. If you're not an American, it's likely you already kind of know what this feels like. Yep. The United States has an extensive network of military bases outside of our borders. It's true. Hundreds of bases. I've been fascinated for a very long time about understanding these US foreign bases abroad, but I've never actually taken the time to accurately map them. So let's do it. Let's map every single US military base around the world. It turns out that's a huge task. Yeah, there's a lot. I already know there is a lot of military bases and the big as well. It's not like they're just like a small little place. They're huge. This is the story of the men of the United States Army who made this project possible and of men. Some of these pictures make it look more scary though, don't they? Like it's just, I mean, I guess it is scary, especially imagine if this was China or Russia and they had military bases all around the world, you'd be pretty freaked out. Never Let's be honest. I'm going to mute this music real quick, just in case it starts hammering me. You an idea of size. Each of those just in case I get one of them content claim ID men. things. The United States military is bigger than any of us can really fathom. It's so big that even the US military doesn't know how big the US military is. What? Back in 2018, 1,200 independent accountants and analysts came in to try to audit the US Department of Defense. To basically try to get like a paper trail of how big this thing is, how much money it spends, etc. And the Department of Defense didn't pass the audit. Like they, they literally did not have the documents or the knowledge to really piece together a full scope of what this organization is, how big it is, how much money it spends. So we don't know. That's, that's terrible. Like they should know. I guess though, if it gets so big, the things do start to kind of slip out the net and you kind of do lose track of everything, but it should be organized. We should know exactly what's going on, where, how much money's being spent. And it's not just to keep track of it, but it's to optimize it, right? If we knew that, we could optimize it a little bit better. It's kind of sad. I hope, they, I hope they figure that out. No, nobody knows how big the Pentagon is in all of its forms. All we do know is that, objectively, it is one of the, if not the largest 
and most powerful organization on the planet and in the history of humanity. Yeah. I mean, if you have a organization that's more powerful than than the Department of Defense uh, in the history of humans, like, let me know. I want to know about it. But as far as I can tell, there's nothing bigger and more powerful than the United States military in 2021. And not in 2021, but if you put it in context of the time that it was around, you could say that the Roman Empire Empire was was just as like dangerous at the time as what the U.S. military is right now. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, surely Genghis Khan nearly taking over the whole planet at the time was just as dangerous as the U.S. military right now. You could say that, right? I think. I don't know. I'm not a historian. <laughs> Much of the U.S. military is not actually in the U.S., but is actually outside of our borders, all around the world. This post is somewhere in Germany, overlooking a sector of the Iron Curtain. Great. One of the first things that Joe Biden and his administration did when they came into power a couple of weeks ago down the road was ask for an assessment of how big is our military presence around the whole world? What is our strategy? And what actually does this presence look like? Uh, so that's good that they are trying to address this then. They are trying to address it. The department will conduct a global force posture review of U.S. military footprint, resources, and strategies. Oh, footprint. good. Footprint. I like that. Yeah. That's like a nice thing. Like, what's our footprint? How big is our footprint mm -hmm. around the world? We don't really know. The Pentagon is going to start to try to assess that. So let's help the Pentagon out and try to map every single United States base around the entire world. Let's do it. My guess is there's going to be a lot, like a lot of them. It wasn't too long ago when I used to think <clears throat> that having military bases in other countries was totally normal. Like, doesn't every country have like military bases in, in other countries? No. Yeah. Anyway, this was sort of reinforced <laughs> for me when I was in college. I did an internship at NATO with the headquarters of NATO, which was in Brussels. To get That's this awesome. job, I had to get a secret security clearance from the US government in order to enter the military base, which was NATO. This was really cool because there was always like people coming through NATO that I got to meet, like my diplomacy hero, Madeleine Albright, who used to be the Secretary of State, or this guy. It's a great honor representing my country abroad uh, for the last uh, 37 years. Good old Joe. Hey, Joe. Had no idea you'd be president someday. Anyway, the big bet. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. What an internship at NATO. Holy cow. That's a really cool internship, let's be honest. The benefit of having this secret security clearance is that I could go into any military base anywhere. And so on Saturdays, I would drive an hour from Brussels to a little village in the Belgian countryside where a military base had been sort of plopped down in the middle of the Belgian countryside in between like stone walls and quaint streets and sheep and farming plots. Yeah, it's a little blurry in this map because it's, you know, a military base and sometimes they blur the satellite imagery. Nothing I can do about it, sorry. And as soon as I entered into the base, went through all the security and I was in the base, I felt like I had left Belgium and was suddenly entering suburban America. Welcome to- that's what it was like in Bahrain. Like you, I, I went through the gates and you get through there and it was just like, it just felt like you walked into the US. It was so strange, but it makes sense really, doesn't it? Like it's kind of a small little patch of US territory, right? To the United States. There was a Taco Bell and movie theaters with American movies and all sorts of shops and like yoga studios and like a, a, a grocery store that had all of the products that I was very used to all at the same price as I could get them in the United States, even though they had been flown across the Atlantic and brought to this place, which is a very so, expensive thing yeah. to do. It That's so bizarre. I remember actually going into the store in Bahrain because I wanted to get some video games for my laptop while I was on ship. I picked up like Witcher 2, um, Brink, if you remember that game, and some others, I'm pretty sure. And they were, they were like really cheap, like surprisingly cheap. Like I couldn't believe it at the time. Yeah, strange. It was a dream for me as a poor college kid living in Brussels and feeling a little bit homesick, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really figured out culture shock at this point. So yeah, I kind of loved it. And I was again, sort of like 
doesn't everyone have military bases in other countries and they can sort of just go to their military base? And it was just, I was so naive. Mm. <laughs> Alas, I've learned the truth. That looks like a lot of dots. That looks like Luckily, a lot of dots. I was able to talk to somebody who literally wrote the book on US military bases abroad. Most okay. US bases abroad look like not so small US towns. Over the years, David has been wow. researching and compiling a database of all the US bases around the world. The result is a very detailed audit that hasn't really ever been done to this degree. In Damn. fact, a few years ago, the Pentagon's own research arm, the RAND Corp, was doing some research on military bases abroad. And instead of using the Pentagon's list of US military bases abroad, these guys used David's list. Like they I guess that go that goes to show that he's done some real hard work there. <laughs> he used David, he was like he's a professor. He's like an anthropologist. He's not like a part of DOD. And yet they're like, this list that he made is actually more authoritative than like the Pentagon's own list. That's I mean, crazy. I'm sort of honored, but it's 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 not a good sign if the, the Pentagon, a Pentagon research arm is using my list and not the Pentagon's own list. So I got a hold of- This ties into all like, people are very like, um, like the, the US government does a lot of secret stuff that we don't know about, right? We know that. But I feel like people take that far along, along the way with a lot of conspiracies. Like I know there's conspiracies out there that make some sense. And there's a lot where the government, uh, like people think that the government, like, basically what I'm trying to say is people think the government is more capable than they actually are like they're not that good at everything like they can't keep that many secrets they keep some good secrets but for the most part they're not as good as what people think and people give them too much credit and think that they can come up with these elaborate plans and conspiracies but the government's not that good they're not that good guys they're not that they're not that uh good at keeping secrets David's list and started wrestling with the data and finding a way to display it on a map so that I could get every single base to show somehow. After a few weeks of doing this, I finally have a map. And wow. that map looks like this. That's a lot. That's a lot. Every dot on this map is a US military base or installation of some sort. In I was going to say, because there was a lot in the UK then, and we don't have that many US military bases, but we do have regular bases that we allow US military onto. So I'm, I'm wondering what the crack is with that. In a different country. Many of these dots are not placed exactly where the base is, because many of these bases are clustered in areas. And if I tried to map them all in the exact spot where they really are, they would all just sort of stack on top of each other, and you wouldn't really be able to see them. But these dots represent every single base outside of the United States, from huge complexes the size of Rhode Island wow. to small airstrips, little facilities that only house American drones or radar or supplies. This is all of them, and at least all that we know of. And if you look at this map and you see a base that you know of that is not here, or one that is there that doesn't belong there, tell me about it. I want to know because this is sort of hard information to ascertain. Yeah. The Pentagon is not very transparent and neither are host countries about where certain bases are and why they exist well there's there's obvious reasons for that right so some of the military bases have to be there and they have to be quiet for certain military operations that's a given right so and that's exactly why they blur them out on the um, satellite for, for uh, the satellite images because at the end of the day, we we have a big footprint. I'm saying we now because I am a US citizen, I guess. I'm saying we now. Um, we do have a large footprint around the world, but we still want to not let countries who we don't align with, who we're not really happy with, you know, uh, we, we want to keep them guessing on how powerful the US actually is, right? So I get it. Many of the bases around the world are, are uh, their existence uh, is due to a, uh, an agreement between the two countries that is often not open to the public, that is, that is secret. Any errors here are mine and not David's. All in all, the number here is about 750. Ooh. 750 US military bases, wow. big and small, outside of the United States. Again, look how many points are in the UK there. And um, again, there isn't that many US military bases in the UK. I think they're just pinpointing where there is. 
excuse me, where there is US military presence. All right. It's scary though. That's a lot of bases. By outside of the United States, I'm including US territories that are not equal to the United States, like Guam, Puerto Rico, etc. But in reality, we probably don't know the real number because that data just simply is not transparently available to us. Yeah. There are a couple major clusters here where the most bases exist. One major one is Germany, and the yeah. others are Japan and South Korea. Yeah. These are basically holdovers from World War II and the subsequent Korean War, when the US, who won the war, came in and occupied these countries in order to set up a new government, write a new constitution, and to help the post-war transfer to a new government. But well, at the end of the day, that's the, they are left over, but they probably left them there on purpose and were like, we're going to keep this military presence right here because of what's happened in the past. We might as well keep the infrastructure there. So I get it. I get it. It's still kind of creepy, though, isn't it, that there's that many in them areas. But what's most interesting to me aren't these clusters that came about because of World War II, but instead the far-flung, sort of unexpected or little-known places that the U.S. military has a little footprint. Like yeah. all the dots in Africa, which have popped up in recent years as the U.S. has expanded its presence there. These are usually small installations that hold maybe a few soldiers or mainly private citizens who are government contractors. Yeah. And they mainly house things like drones or radar or weapon systems. You also have this cluster of dots deep in the Indian Ocean, which is the island of Diego Garcia, which I've talked what? about at length about the US military's role in displacing hundreds of local people to set up a base there. Some wow. of these dots are just airstrips, a runway in the middle of nowhere. And these runways usually belong to the host country and the US just rents them for a period of time. Yeah, and I think that's probably um, why there's so many dots in the UK. They're probably just, because there is quite a few um, runways and military bases in the UK and they probably just use it. Because at the end of the day, what like it feels like the UK and the US are so close that what's theirs is ours and what's ours is theirs at the end of the day. Does that make sense? Like you go, you go to a US military base as a British personnel and you're welcomed as if you're one of them. So if anything, you're treated highly. Like if, you, if you're a US military member and you go into a UK base, we treat you as best we possibly can because we love each other at the end of the day, right? best it's like best friends like best friends us and the uk <laughs> like this facility in the middle of the desert in oman places like this exist to hold supplies in case a war breaks out so the us maintains these stockpiles of war supplies all around the globe so that they can strike at any point without having to ramp up a, a like a war economy at home yeah. it takes away a lot of the friction from going to war they've made it easier for the us military to launch offensive wars, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan um, were easier to launch because the U.S. has maintained a huge infrastructure of bases. Some of these dots don't represent a place where U.S. soldiers are actually stationed, but instead it represents where money from the Pentagon has gone to influence or build up infrastructure. Right. For example, in Iceland, the U.S. is spending a lot of money tens of millions of dollars to upgrade this airport, the airport that we all go through when we're going to Iceland, but doing it for military purposes so that the US can use it, can land there if needed. That so next sense. time you land in Iceland on your way to the Blue Lagoon, just know that you're passing by one of these little dots. That makes sense. Over here in the Azores, the, these islands that are owned by Portugal, nearly 2,000 kilometers away from any landmass, there is a group of US military installations mainly used for refueling and weapon storage. Head up here to Greenland, and wow. you'll see a little base way up high, the most northern base in the world where 140 Americans live. Kind of looks interesting. I'd love yeah. to go there someday. I'd love to way go Way out here in the Pacific. It seems like they've really... They're, they're just trying to spread the wings, right? They're just trying to have a lot of resources and a lot of places so if anything does kick off they're ready and i guess that's the whole point of the military right is to always be ready always have that uh, one step ahead of everyone else because at the end of the day if someone starts you know if i don't know a country starts invading um africa certain parts of africa we have resources and military there already we don't have to fly all the way across the world 
with resources, personnel, weapons. It's already there. It's already there. And that's that's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's also scary because if there's not many personnel looking after it, it's vulnerable. But how vulnerable is it? We don't know, do we? At the end of the day, we don't know. You've got loads of remote military bases owned by the United States. They're mainly small airstrips, like this base <clears throat> on the southern tip of this huge atoll of the Marshall Islands. That's so right, cool. Listen, I'm not going to explain every single base. There are 750, maybe 800. There's a bunch of bases. I just wanted to give you a flavor of what some of these look like. They're diverse. They're all over the place. Yeah. And they're fascinating to me. I have been compiling accounts of people who live next to U.S. military bases. I have Ooh. over 100 accounts from people that from my call on Instagram. I want more. I want to make an entire video about life next to a base. And that is why I'm calling upon all of you. I'm going to put a link in my description to like a survey. It's like a form of like what it's like to live next to a U.S. military base. I have it right here. My guess is a lot of people are going to be pretty negative. Um... You know, because there's a lot of times when I would be in a military base in the UK and the residents of the area don't necessarily like all the lads going out and getting drunk and making a mess of themselves. So maybe it's something similar and to that. Maybe people are, feel safer, maybe? I don't know. It's kind of interesting, the way. And I'm going to be checking it. You can fill out this form and then I will get your response and I will read through your response and I will use that to construct an understanding of what life is like next to a U.S. military base. Yeah. I talked to David a bunch about this too. He's done a bunch of research, done a bunch of interviews, and I want to keep talking about this. So if you don't live next to a military base, I want to hear from you, like, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah. Whether you're an American or not an American, like, is, does this seem right? Does it seem like the, the right choice, the right thing for our taxpayer money to be going towards? I'm still making up my mind on a lot of this stuff, and I want to start a discussion. My goal in this video was to just map it, was to just look at it, be able to see it on a map. Yeah. And I've finally done that. But I think I have, I have mixed feelings about it. My military mind is like, of course this is good for the US. Like, we're on the front foot, we're one step ahead of everyone, we've got resources in places where people don't have any personnel. Military strategy is is way better when we have a foothold in somewhere right we know that that's a given there's the other side of me the hippie side of me which a lot of people don't know about which you probably see on the original adventures vlogs if you see if you ever go watch that where i feel like we should just leave countries to do their own thing they're their own government they're their own people they deserve their right to have their own space and having a foreign military base there is kind of intimidating but at the end of the day, the U.S., even though the U.S. military has done some horrible things, and we can all agree on that, we can all agree on that, and pretty much every military has done horrible things, the U.S. has done horrible things, we do know for a fact that the U.S. is trying their best to make the place, make this world a better place. We know that, right? That's what we're trying to do. Whether you believe in the ethos of capitalism and, and the way of the U.S. life, whether you believe in that or not, I think we can all agree that the U.S. is just trying to make the world a better place, right? Even if we have done some horrible things. And the U.K., again, has done some horrible things. They're trying to make the world a better place. Um, but you can say the same thing for these other big countries like Russia and China, who we see as dangerous, but them themselves think that they're trying to make the world a better place. So it's kind of contradicting. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think I'm right by saying that? Do you think that we... We should stick to the military mind and be like it's good to have the presence or do you think we should stick more to the to the and uh, you know the hippie side of it which i like to call like i have the two split mind of me i have like the military and the hippie mind where we should just leave people alone let them do their own thing they're their own people what do you think let me know in the comments down below because i'd love to know your opinion on that by the way there will be a high-res version of this map on my patreon for patrons who sign up for the map background tier that will be there so i will be in the comments more than normal for this video and i want to hear from you before you go i want to say thank you to the people who gave me a lot of footage for this piece i didn't go out into the desert and the ocean to film for this video <laughs> i got a lot of it from storyblocks who's the sponsor of today's video storyblocks has supported this channel for a long time definitely go over there and uh i won't watch the ad but definitely go over there and support this guy Go to his Patreon. He obviously deserves it. He's put a lot of hard work into this video. And by the looks of it, 
he's put just as much work in as the pentagon making this video so definitely go over there and give him some love because i'm definitely going to be doing that and you can download as much as you want of this like really good stuff i've been using swordblock for supporting this channel for supporting my work and thank you all for being here i will see you all in the next video Bye -bye. so my call is if you do live next to a u.s military base go and fill that form out because i'd love to see if he does a follow-up video i wonder if he's already done it let's have a look i'd love to, oh no this was in february 21 so if he has if oh get away um if you can go over there and do that pop out a um pop out that farm and fill it in if you live next to a military base because i think that's very very intriguing and i'd love to um i'd love to hear about that because i think that goes with what i was saying about um do people like us having a foothold in their country you know do do they like the fact that we have that upper you know tier of strategy now that we have footholds everywhere i think it's so fascinating it's so fascinating it really really is I can't get over that video. I really enjoyed it. I'll leave a link down below to the original video. Go over there, like it, subscribe to him, and all that good stuff. He totally deserves it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, don't forget, guys, massive announcement down below. Original Adventures, me and my wife are converting a school bus and traveling the country. It's totally fun. We've got three vlogs up right now, and the channel is booming, so definitely go and check that out, both YouTube and Instagram. Link down below. I'm very excited. Uh, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, links down below to all my socials, including the two links to Discord. We've got the military link and the geek link. Join whichever one you'd like. Also, a link down below to my podcast and my Twitch stream, where I stream every Tuesdays and Thursdays. And a link down below to my second channel, Original Human Geek, where we play D&D &D and a bunch of other fun stuff. Until next time, guys. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.